back. This is the Big Ideas Theater at AARC Congress. I'm Ed Hyland. I'm joined now by Dr. Rajiv Dehan. Dr. Dehan, once again, thank you so much for coming by and joining us. My pleasure. We're talking about uh, aerosolized antibiotics. Uh, you had a ch uh, presentation, uh, What Now, pertaining to aerosolized antibiotics. And uh, what do we need them for? I mean, why are inhaled antibiotics so important in ICO, especially for uh, patients with pneumonia? Ed, you'll be surprised to learn that even in 2018, there are many patients with ICU pneumonia who are on ventilators and who are succumbing to their illness and that antibiotics are not being effective in treating these patients. So the main reasons for that are that these are fairly sick people and they are infected with hard to kill organisms. And when the only recourse to treat them is with intravenous antibiotics, then there are certain limitations that come into play. One of the major limitations is that many of these antibiotics do not have good penetration into the lung when given intravenously, so they don't achieve very high levels of the drug inside the lung, where the pneumonia is obviously. And that is because there is some limitation in the dose that we can provide to patients because intravenously given antibiotics have side effects on the kidneys and you know, so those limit the amount of drug that can be given. So because of these two limitations then we get uh, organisms which are resistant to these antibiotics. And in some parts of the world now, there are organisms for which there is no good antibiotic treatment. So that's one of the reasons why we are looking at alternatives to just intravenous antibiotics. And inhaled antibiotics or aerosolized antibiotics offer an option wherein you can achieve much higher drug concentrations in the lung because we are giving it directly into the lungs. And the systemic levels that are achieved with those drugs are much, much lower than what would be achieved with intravenous antibiotics. So you have a double advantage. You achieve high local concentrations in the lung while you spare systemic toxicity. So right now, most people use aerosolized antibiotics in addition to systemic antibiotics. And that's the current state of the practice at this point. Doctor, if you could, uh, could you tell us about some recent uh, scientific studies related to inhaled antibiotics in ICU, pa ICU patients with pneumonia? So that is uh, what my presentation is going to be about this afternoon. One of the problems that we had with previous studies on this topic was that the patients were not selected you know, in a randomized and controlled manner and that people used formulations that were actually designed for intravenous use. And so we did not have in formulations that were specifically designed for inhalation. And also the delivery methods that were used in the past were, did not assure that we got enough drug concentration in the lung. So that has led to two recent large randomized control trials in patients with ventilator-associated pneumonia. And these were done internationally. One was a phase two study and one was a large phase three study. So the phase three study looked at inhaled amikacin, and the phase two study looked at the combination of inhaled amikacin and phosphomycin. And these studies use uh, rigorous methods to you know, select for the right patients with pneumonia. They used good delivery techniques and they used formulations that were specifically made for inhalation. Unfortunately, both of these studies were not able to show that 
inhaled antibiotics provided any additional clinical benefit. So that has left a big question about whether we should be using this modality of treatment on a routine basis in the ICU. With that looming question mark, uh, give us some thoughts uh, on, on what you feel might be the future of inhaled antibiotics. So, you know, we can uh, use inhaled antibiotics in many different kinds of patients with pneumonia in the ICU. So one approach that was taken in these clinical trials was that we took patients in who were clinically diagnosed with pneumonia and then had uh, organisms seen on gram stain or who were thought to have infection with gram negative organisms and then treat them with inhaled antibiotics. And as I said, those studies were not successful. But there are other groups of patients who have infections with organisms which are resistant to multiple drugs. And then there are infections that are resistant to almost all antibiotics. And the only antibiotic that they are susceptible to is a drug called cholestin. So recent studies that are emerging are showing that adding inhaled cholestin to either systemically given cholestin or only aerosolized cholestin without uh, the intravenous cholestin are showing benefits in, in patients who are otherwise very sick and are very likely to, to die from their illness. So, Again, this is a potential area where we need to explore the role of uh, you know, inhaled cholestin either alone or as an, as an adjunct to systemic therapy. Fantastic subject, Doctor. Thank you so much for coming by and sharing it with us. You're welcome. Thank you. This is the Big Ideas Theater. I'm Ed Highland. We'll see you next time.